everyone. For the longest time, people have asked me if we were going to see the end panel of the Son of the Wolf comic. A comic connected to the expansion Legion, where we see a much older version of Anduin join Velen in some kind of battle against the darkness. People ask me if we're going to see that comic, that panel, become a reality. Fun fact, this panel actually changed a bit as well, they changed some of the dialogue, and for the longest time, my answer was probably not, as Blizzard, they've got the tendency to change the mind on the story direction, as well as Legion's moral of the story, at least one of them, that was that our lives were not in the hands of fate. We own our own destiny, we are our scars, that's what I thought. Did you not see this fate, prophet? Fate? Our survival was never in fate's hands. These days, right now, with BlizzCon 2023, we have Chris Madsen on stage with a clear vision on where they want to take the story of Warcraft for the next three expansions, as well as the mention of Light versus Darkness. Sargeras stabbed the world at the end of Legion, and we are going to be dealing with that story now with the sword, with the hooks to build up back then. Enduin is also looking a little bit older, a little bit rougher these days. Could this vision come back to the forefront? Perhaps something to consider. There is another vision of the Boy King, as described in Valen's short story called Prophet's Lesson. I'll link it down below if you want to read it for yourself. The story goes as follows. He spun to face the prince, surprised as he often was when it came to humans, by how quickly the child seemed to be becoming a man, by the adult in the words hurled at him. And as soon as Enduin came into view, the world changed. Instead of the prince, an armored warrior stood before him, his plate helm and breastplate shining with the essence of the light itself. The warrior wielded a sword forged from the same material as the armor, held it aloft as he perched on an outcropping. Whether it was on another world or Azeroth, Velen couldn't quite tell, and suddenly the dark sky above erupted with the combined chivalry of Azeroth's races. The Blood Elves, Orcs, trolls, Tauren, and even the accursed undead and scheming goblins rode flying mounds of every sort and description. They were armored and armed in magical weaponry, glowing with so much power it hurt Valen's eyes to look at them. Besides the legions of the Horde, the ancient night elves charged with humans, dwarves and gnomes, whose ancestors formed the original alliance, and the shape-changing wargons were united with them. Valen's own Draenei bolstered the army, their ranks adorned in otherworldly medals and bearing crystalline maces and swords. The Horde and Alliance were not alone. Dragons swooped and soared in formation that made the sky resemble a giant, multicolored reptilian wing. They blanketed the horizon with their physical size and numbers. And when they roared a challenge, it shook not just the earth Valen stood on, but the universe as well. And yet, for all of this, the greatest shock to Velen's senses came as he saw those that flew just beyond the army of dragons. The Naru had taken the field, so many that Velen didn't understand how creation could contain them. The power of these beings of light filled Velen's heart with hope, swept away the lonely centuries, and left him in wonder that he could ever despair, that the dark, no matter how terrible, could ever truly reign. And then a shadow fell. It was vast and empty and swallowed all light that entered it. Velen knew it would be all-consuming until, at last, it would turn and devour itself, endlessly gnawing on nothing in the great dark beyond, removing all meaning from the universe, from the most heartbreaking sonata to the most arresting sunset. It was too terrible to see, to comprehend, and yet the army headed straight for it, and the light began to fade. Standing before the prophets was only a human man-child, eyes wide and passionate, saying something unintelligible to him. The prophets turned his back on Anduin, his mind clawing toward the light, reaching for the thread of the vision he'd witnessed, trying to see the path amid the fractured possibilities. He was forcefully reminded of the weeks leading up to the cataclysm. He didn't notice when the prince left his chambers, now time's going to tell if this is going to make a return to the story, but I figured, you know, a quickie to get you all in the know-how, to get you all up to speed. Hope you enjoyed, and until next time, see ya!